How's it going guys and welcome back to another episode of the AFC Wimbledon Road to Glory career mode. This will be episode number 42 of this series and in this episode we're going to be playing quite a few games. We're going to be having one against Birmingham, one against Athletic Bilbao and also one against QPR as well. I'm also going to try my best to get a few more games in in this episode so I will also try and play this Preston North End game. We want to try and get to the transfer window as fast as possible. Not too quick that we're rushing through the series though. We want to have a balance really in between so that we're not going too slow but we're not going too fast at the same time. But now we are going to be going into the first game of the episode here and it is going to be against Birmingham City in the Championship. Currently we're doing pretty well in the Championship but we didn't really get the best results in the last episode. We got two draws out of the three games that we did play so if we can get a win in this game that would be an improvement. Birmingham City actually have a better stadium than us. It's just it really is depressing. We're on the same level as them but we have a crappy Park Lane or whatever it's called. It's just dreadful, it really is. You should be able to improve your stadium as you go up the leagues because that's just realistic, isn't it? And now once again, it's going to be Henrik Iyama on the ball. Or taking the throw in, I should say. Getting the cross into the middle with Chilwell. And very close there to winning the header. We're going to come out here with Bree. And now it's Grimes through here to Jenkins having a shot. Wow! It blazes off the top of the bar and that was a really good effort there by Jenkins. Oh, this is just poor defending. What a good save by Sears again, though. He is literally keeping me in the position I am in the league at the moment. Seriously, he's making some really good saves. Really? Really? Has that just happened? Oh, wow. You know what? I, I can't even lie. They deserve to take the lead in this game. They've had a lot of chances, and I can't lie. They definitely deserve this lead. Gleason now getting the cross in and surely that's get yeah that's gonna be game over. Yeah. That's game over. We've lost another game and I just I don't even know what to say. This game has just been completely against me from start to finish. Hardly had a shot on goal and yeah, that just sums up the game really. It's just it's just pathetic, it really is. 3-0. 3-0. I'm having a meltdown here. I really am. This has got to be one of the heaviest losses we're going to take all season. Oh, maybe even the whole career mode. This is the worst loss I've had. It's just way too simple. They get inside. There's three defenders around him. And then, again, another out jumping at the far post. Sears, I, I can't even blame him for that because the defending is just shambolic. I am absolutely shell-shocked. I just can't believe what I've witnessed in this game. A 3-0 drubbing. And we just get absolutely humiliated in this game by Birmingham City. That is not what I would have expected, considering where we are in the league at the moment. Even a draw would have been nice. But that would have been three draws in a row. Now we've lost... Well, we haven't won in four or five games, I don't think. Maybe a bit of player training will cheer me up. I doubt it will do because that result has really got me deflated. And we will end up seeing there that Yara's gone up to a 59. He's already gone up by 3 in the past two episodes, which is fantastic. So after that absolutely shocking game, I'm just so deflated after that. I need to stay positive. I've decided that I'm going to create a new team sheet. I've already created it. And maybe this will change things a little bit. I'm going to try it out. See how it goes because clearly changes need to be made. The only real change is that we don't have wingers. Instead, we're going to have more central midfielders. And we've got a central attacking midfielder, two strikers. Maybe that will do the difference in this game. I'm not really too sure. So now we're going to be playing against Bilbao. As if my troubles didn't get any worse. The last time we played against Bilbao, we lost 3-0. And of course, we lost 3-0 against Birmingham in the last game. I don't want to see another loss in this game. And we will see the table there. We're currently third. And if we beat Bilbao here, there's a chance. Well, there's a, a very big chance that we've got an opportunity to go through. And now it's going to be a corner. We're going to play this one short instead. As it seems to be working out for us recently. It's a good cross into the middle. And almost finding the back of the net with that effort. Now we're getting it forward. And again, Pacini through here to Ayama who has a shot. And finally, Ayama does get on the score sheet. And that was a fantastic ball by Puccini. It's been a long time coming since Ayama's scored. But finally, he's got himself a goal. And look at that for a pass. 
absolutely perfect. And for once this season, Ayama's actually finished. And that is a very good finish indeed. And as long as we don't concede now, park in the bus, then we're going to win this game. And that would be a massive three points in this group. But we've got to make sure we defend properly. And that's going to be pretty difficult when players like Raul Garcia are really hounding our goal. Oh, Miranda's done fantastically well here. He's going to try and play it through. And we're going to take it around the keeper. Surely a penalty. Unless it was offside. I don't know. But either way, I thought that should have been a penalty. Maybe he was offside. Eight minutes left to hold on in this game. Can we do it and pull off a famous victory against Bilbao? It's going to be tough in these final few minutes. And the final exchanges of the game are about to happen. We're going to try and get this one forward. And we do. It's going to be Ayama getting it over the top. And it's going to be Armstrong getting on the end of this one. And the good thing is none of my players are tired. I haven't had to bring anyone off the bench because we've just been passing it around the bat. That's literally what I've been doing. Surely this is the end of the game now. Literally we are in zero added minutes now. It's the 90th minute. Surely we've just won the game. And we're going to get it into the middle. And yes we certainly have won the game now. Tom Park scores a header. And after being defensive for pretty much the whole of the second half. We do end up nicking a goal and we've certainly won the game now. What a victory that could turn out to be. I know we're probably not going to go far in the Europa League. But if we can get out of the group stage, that would just be something else. That really would be. And getting a win here against Bilbao 2-0, that is the result that probably will give us that hope. The dream is still alive and thanks to Tom Park scoring in the 90th minute. But more importantly, Ayama's goal in the first half. That gave us the lead and we just went defensive from there on out. I'm pretty sure we had a lot of possession. Yeah, there you go. 64% possession. When do you ever see that? Usually it's the other way round and the AI has the most of the possession. But we've done well in the game and we've got a clean sheet as well, which we can be proud of. And literally two days later, we're going to be having a game against QPR. I'm trying to fit a few more games into each episode. And I'm going to cut down the highlights a little bit more. So although I was going to plan to play a few games off camera, I'm going to play these games. I'm going to cut it up and make it a lot shorter. I'm not really going to go too in depth with the side that we're picking because it's pretty much the same side we use every game. And we're going to hope that this side is good enough to beat a QPR in this game. So looking at the table, this is going to be a really big top of the table clash. We're coming up against a QPR. We're currently fourth in the table and getting a loss to, I think it was Birmingham in the last game. That really did hinder our title hopes. And if we do have any chance of rekindling those title hopes, we need to get a win in this game. Otherwise, we're just probably going to have to settle for second place or maybe... We're just going to have to try and get promoted via the playoffs. That would be quite interesting if we did, though. And now Lockyer's won it in midfield. And it's a good opportunity now. We'll get it through to Armstrong. And we'll try and get it through again. Billy King's done well. And he's almost cut inside there. And he's still got it. And somehow... Oh, wow. I, if Dakovic was onside and he missed that, I just would have... Literally, I just would have just stopped. There, there would have been no point in trying anymore. But Billy King did so well there. I didn't want to have a fake shot in the first place. But God, what an opportunity that was. Inside again. And now it's Grimes. Inside and through here to Lockyer. Oh my God, what is it going to take? Is it going to be one of those games where I have literally numerous chances and I can't even score? And now through here to Charlie Austin. He's hit the post. And we need to clear this one away. I just didn't expect him to have a shot there. Another draw. If it's not... A, I don't even know what to say anymore. We're just doing so bad in the league. We've already lost 3-0 in the league. Yes, we did get a 2-0 win in the Euro League. But we want to get promoted. It doesn't matter about the Euro League. That's just a competition that it would be nice that we go far in. But the Championship, we need to get to the Premier League this season. And getting 0-0 draws... Not doing well in games. I, I just don't even know. I think I think what I need to do is I just need to go away. Just come back to the game. And maybe I will feel refreshed. Because clearly, I'm not in the best frame of mind. I just, I don't know. I'm just not playing well. So currently, we're still fourth in the table. Which is okay, I guess. We could be in a better position, though. I would rather be in the top two, if I'm honest. But... There's still a lot of games to go. There's still a, we're, we're not even halfway through the season yet. So I think I'm being a bit premature saying that we're not going to do well. 
and I've just got to keep faith in the team and eventually I think we will come through. So now we're going to be moving into the post commentary part of this episode. We're going to be playing two games, one against Preston, who are currently, I'm not too sure where they are actually, I don't even think they're in the top half of the table. Probably close to the relegation zone and with the recent results that we've had in the league, we do need to get a win in this game against Preston if we want to try and keep our title hopes alive. And in this game, I certainly was looking to go out all guns blazing, try and go all out attack, see if we can get as many goals as possible against one of the weakest sides in the championship. And we start the game off very well here with a penalty that we do end up earning with the armour. We slot it away with Adam Armstrong and that is a cool, calm and collective, well taken penalty. And he does make it 1-0 there. 12th goal in the championship as well. He's done well for himself this season. And then we get an even better chance here with Armstrong. Can we make it 2-0? Unfortunately not. That was a good opportunity. But we couldn't quite take it. Another really good opportunity here as well. As the corner came in. But once again, another opportunity that goes begging. But finally, in the 66th minute, maybe we'll get our breakthrough here. And it's going to be a Yama cutting inside and having a shot. And Ayama does get on the score sheet. That is, well, that is basically his signature move. Just cutting inside off that left-hand side. And then coming in and having a powerful strike into the back of the net. It's usually too powerful for the goalkeeper. And maybe we could even get a third goal here later on in the game. Into injury time as we pass it back with Reeves to Ayama. Who does strike and put it into the back of the net. And that is a really good comeback from Ayama. He really hasn't been impressive this season as much as he was last season. Although he did score quite a lot of goals last season. So it's going to be pretty hard to top the performances that he did have last season. But we end up getting a 3-0 result. And this, this was just a massive win. Out of all the wins we've got in the championship so far, that might be the win that puts us back on track. And hopefully it's the result that will give us confidence to go on and maybe push up the table a little bit more like we were a couple of episodes back where we were first or second in the table. We do have a player training session that just went by though. Yara did end up growing to a 61. And goalkeeper's growth is just broken on this game. We know that. If you train any goalkeeper, no matter what overall he is, he is just going to grow incredibly well. It doesn't matter what his potential is. But we have, we have a little bit of a dilemma here. Because Ayama, after that game, he played fantastically well. And deservedly so, you know. He came to me and said, I want a new contract after that game. He wants nine grand a week. So that's going to be a bit of an issue. I don't think I will pay that to him. I ended up just giving him the wage he's currently on at the moment. Nine grand is just way too much. But we are going into the next game. It's going to be against Rapid Vienne. This is another big game because it is going to be in the Europa League, the final group stage game. And you would have been able to see by the table that if we don't get anything but a win in this game, it could cost us come at the end of the group stage game. And, you know, a win is, a mu a win is almost a must, really. Unless Athletic Bilbao end up losing their match, we have to get a win ourselves. And we were certainly pounding Rapid Vienne's goal. We were trying to get that goal. It was just very difficult because they just wouldn't break down. Their defence was just really solid. And their goalkeeper was even better, making a quite a few good saves in the first half. And then into the second half, we would try and maybe push on. And we got a little bit frustrated, I think it was fair to say. And unfortunately, I did get a player sent off. I was really, really frustrated in this game because I knew... That this would be a missed opportunity if Bilbao ended up winning their match. But maybe it wouldn't matter here. As we go into the 90th minute, it's going to be a Yama in really good form at the moment. Cutting inside. Can he score it though? No, he doesn't. And in the 90th minute, that would have been the winner had a Yama would have scored it. And that would have basically sealed off the result. But are we going to go through to the next round of the Euro League? That is what we're going to find out very, very soon. We probably should have won the game based on chances. But is it going to matter? Saint-Étienne won their game. Does that mean we're going through to the next round, to the knockout stages? Yes, it does. We are going through as AFC Wimbledon in the championship to the knockout rounds of the Euro League. Who could believe that? I just can't believe it. We've got a nice, nice budget as well that's been added. 1.7 million, which is absolutely awesome. But this will be the end of this episode, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. And if you have enjoyed this episode of this career mode, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. But apart from that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.